Alrighty guys, actually up here at my aunt's place today in her uh, teeny tiny little shed here that my head barely clears. Anyway, I've come up here to rescue this thing. This is a uh, little Toro 210-5 uh, lawn tractor and I actually grew up on this tractor. I'll throw in a picture or two if I can find it. Uh, this was probably the first mower I ever ran. And I've been obsessed with lawnmowers and tractors since I was a little kid. And I guess it kind of all stems back to this one. So this thing's been sitting here in the shed for probably 10 years or better without being run. Uh, this is actually the second tractor she's upgraded since she got away from this one. And uh, she's got a pretty big yard to cut. So this thing, is I think it's only a 32 or 38 inch cut. It's pretty small. Uh, so... This thing's got got some years on it. She ran this one for a long time, but it's uh, no comparison to some of these bigger ones. But anyway, she uh, she doesn't want it anymore. She told me I could have it, so I'm up here. Uh, I just aired up that one front tire. I've got a couple more tires to air up over here. And we'll get this thing rolled out of the shed for the first time in quite a while. I don't know whose bright idea it was to put the valve stems on the inside over at Wheel Horse. But they need to have a good stern talking to. Well, now that we got here, now that we got her out here in the light for the first time in quite a while, you guys can really get a complete look at it. It's nothing special. Nothing to write home about. Just got some sentimental value for me. So I figure uh, everybody likes a good will it start video. So here we go. Will this thing start? I don't, I'm just guessing here. It probably hasn't been started in at least 10 years. I guess we'll just go ahead and Flintstone this thing. Ah, down to my place. Ah, I just live right up the street, like I said. Gravity is in our favor today. All the tires held here. That's a good sign. Come on. A little more. And there we go. got her pushed into the shop here we can go ahead and have a little more thorough look at it I know this is the original seat on it pretty tore up these days and this uh, unit does have an hour meter so we're reading 1343.8 hours and I imagine that's not super high for one of these but uh, I don't know she she used it a lot I feel like it should be higher than that so maybe we'll see if that hour meter even works once we get it going uh, the only reason she even retired this unit was just because it wasn't giving her the quality of cut that she's looking for. She's pretty picky about her lawn. This, uh, this was her favorite mower, though. Flip up the, uh, the whirly cover here. And I blew everything off the leaf blower before I pushed it into the shop, but there was a giant clump of corrosion on top of the battery that went flying. We got a uh, 10 horsepower Briggs and Scrap Iron Industrial Commercial here. Uh, I think it must be on a compression stroke. Yep, there we go. Spins over pretty good. These uh, IC engines were pretty bulletproof. Like I said, I was the last one to use this tractor. I think I borrowed it or something. It, it wasn't even her main tractor at that point. And uh, that's been 10 years ago. So you got a gear shift here on the dash. You got uh, reverse, neutral, one through five. And I think I remember that uh, it really wasn't pulling good after like third, you know, fourth and fifth, which are some pretty quick gears. It uh, seemed like the belt was slipping on it. And 10 years later, I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that's probably the case. I don't know if you guys can tell, that belt is sitting down in the groove pretty darn far in the, uh, in the drive pulley there. So probably going to have to get a new belt for that and it's liable to be cracked and weather checked from sitting so long and not moving 
a meatball. You think we should get a new belt, buddy? Probably need a new belt. Yeah, probably need a new belt, huh? What do you think about this belt, buddy? What about that? That's a problem. That's our deck belt, so that one's definitely going to need replaced as well. Take a peek in the fuel tank here, see what the state of the fuel is. That's actually bone dry. Minimal dirt in the bottom of the tank. Uh, yeah, I don't see any fuel at all in there. So, that's good for the tank, that means I don't have to clean the tank, but... That could also mean that we have a carburetor bowl full of varnish, so our fuel line doesn't feel very flexible anymore either, so we'll have to probably go over that and check for cracks. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and pop the bowl off, take a look at that, and we'll go from there. Get this air cleaner off of here too and have a gander at that. Ugh. Okay, so there's a foam pre-filter up top here that's uh, rotted away, falling apart. I'm glad we pulled this to check it. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. The actual paper element doesn't look bad, though. Yep, looks pretty good. I think we'll just hit that with the compressed air and good as new. Glad I read this plate here actually because this filter setup is a little bit different from most Briggs and Stratton setups. This one actually collects the dirt on the inside of the filter and uh, she definitely looks a little worse on the inside but still not bad. Still probably just hit it with the air compressor and call it good. Here we can look down into our carburetor. It does not look too bad. Our choke is hanging up though by the looks of it. So we're looking down inside of our carburetor right now. That butterfly valve that you can see just there is our choke. And right now it should be in the open position and it's not. So that's telling me it's probably stuck because I'm Turning the choke on and off right now, and she ain't moving. Yeah, I can't budge it. I'm gonna have to go ahead and give that a little tappy tap. That's our throttle there. The throttle's still turning freely, so that's good. I guess with the choke being stuck, I probably should just go ahead and yank this carburetor off of here. There we go. Now I'm looking at these uh, bolts that hold our carburetor onto the block and you can't hardly get at the top one and the bottom one is blocked by a heat shield here. And then I noticed that the bolts that hold the muffler on are loose so yeah, we just opened up a can of worms. We're going to have to go ahead and suck these bolts out, take that off of there to get the carburetor off of there. Fingers crossed that they actually come off. Oh, thank God it didn't snap. Looks like it's bent, though. Probably gonna have to get a new one of those. Hmm. Yeah, this one's not bad. This bolt's definitely bent. Actually, maybe they're both slightly bent. How that would happen is anybody's guess. I guess maybe running into something here. I don't know. And these are these slotted head bolts. And the only way that we're going to be able to break them loose, this top one here I can use a wrench on. Doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get to the bottom one at all. Hopefully a screwdriver can pop them off of here for us. Oh, okay, good. Weren't that tight. To my knowledge, this carburetor's never been off of here. As I said before, I have a 
intimate knowledge of this mower, although it's been quite some time. I would always go up and help her whenever we needed to work on something. Come back. Where'd you go? Oh, breather boot really didn't want to come off of there. All right. Get this thing on the bench. Did I say bench? I meant stool. There's way too much stuff to move on the workbench. <laughs> uh, so here's our carburetor. I did give it a little shake here and a little bit of, oh, I love that smell. Varnished gas coming out of it. Let's go ahead and pop this bowl off. Oh, I wish I could just like soak this into the seats of my truck. That's a beautiful air freshener. Oh yeah, did you guys see how dark that is? That's, oh yeah. I really do, I love that smell. A lot of people tell me that they hate it, but uh, I don't know. It's always something I've enjoyed in the mechanical world. Looks like a 9 16 Nope, half inch. Oh yeah, got a little bit of, got a bit of jelly on our needle there. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> well, it's actually worse than I thought it was going to be. Float has definitely got quite a bit of schmoo on it. Hopefully, once I pull the pin out here, hopefully there's no holes in the float. Nope, I don't hear anything, so that's good. We should still have a good float. Our main jet here is plugged up. Our metering jet uh, was a little bit sluggish in there, but it did come out fairly easy. On the top here, we have a low speed adjustment I believe that is and I'm not sure what this guy's for maybe a venturi tube that's gonna come out of there <clears throat> I've had a lot of Briggs carburetors apart and I don't think I've ever had one that's exactly like this this one's just a bit different And it looks like I was right. We got a Venturi tube here. Or at least that's what I call a Venturi tube. It's got this long pipe on the end of it with a bunch of small holes in it that those get clogged up a lot of times. But fortunately, I think the end is clogged up here, but the uh, cross holes that run through it, I can see through all of them. So not too bad there. And I guess for giggles, we'll go ahead and pull this low speed needle. See what it looks like. Yeah, it's actually clean. I didn't, didn't think it would be bad. We can make sure that port's clean down inside of there. And the last thing we have to do is get our choke butterfly valve freed up. That's what this guy is here. And it's, uh, it's putting up a good fight. I grabbed my paws onto it there and uh, tried to stiff arm it, but it's, it's not, not having it. What I'm going to do is soak it up with some carb cleaner first, make sure I hit down in there on the hinge and everything, and soak the whole thing down in it pretty much. Hopefully that kind of softens up the schmoo that's holding the choke, and lets us free it up a bit easier without damaging anything. I also need to blow some carburetor cleaner into this uh, main jet here, because it's so clogged up with schmoo that I can't get the screwdriver to it. I'll just end up rounding it off, so we'll get that cleaned up and then remove that. I used to always run gunk carburetor cleaner, 
but I found this AC Delco stuff pretty cheap somewhere and it actually seems to work really well I'm not affiliated with them in any way but I would gladly take a sponsorship from a carburetor cleaner people Whew. I go through it Oh man. In the meantime, I should be soaking down these parts over here. Oh yeah. Don't think it's working. But actually, I think I got it cleaned out. You don't have to take this out of here. I prefer to. But it looks like the uh, the hole has cleaned itself out. I can see through there again. Well, I'm going to go ahead and rule that one out. It's not happening. It. Looking pretty clean in there anyway, so not a huge deal. I'm going to get an air gun now and make sure all our ports are cleaned out. And uh, after we scrub our float and bowl, we can start reassembly. Almost forgot we need to uh, still get the choke broke loose too. Alright, this choke. There we go. Just grab a hold of it with pliers there and I'm able to open and close the choke. It's just pretty stiff so we can uh, Spray a little bit of blaster on that. Yeah, it's working back and forth easier now. A little bit of blaster on that. Should get that thing freed back up and moving easy. Oh yeah, there we go. Easy as pie again. Free as can be rubber seat on our metering needle here appears to be okay and the rubber ones are a little more forgiving too even if they do have some wear you can usually still use them got the end of this venturi tube poked out here it's gonna have to run some carb cleaner through it some compressed air you can see the carb cleaners working on this grunge on the float here in the bowl just keep soaking them down periodically Got our venturi tube cleaned out nicely. Go ahead and stick this back in. Maybe. That. This low speed idle jet will run it in all the way to the seat and then back it out two turns as a starting point half one full turn one and a half two full turns and I think that's about right because it wasn't in there very far whenever I pulled it out we'll take our toothbrush and lightly scrub up our float wow stuff putting up a good fight might have to get a brass brush out. I don't really like to use brass on brass, but something's got to cut this stuff. There's a little bit of grime on here. 
A, if you put it back together with the grime on there, over time the gas is going to eat at it and eventually it'll come off into the bowl and clog up your jets again. B, it actually, that little bit of grime on there will affect the weight of the bowl, or the, it will affect the weight of the float and uh, can alter how it meters fuel. Take it easy with this brush. I'm afraid I could damage the float. Although I can probably run right up the street and get a replacement plastic one for peanuts. But, try not to spend any money if I don't have to. A lot of people in the comments are constantly, oh, just go buy a new one, just go buy a new one. And I'm of the belief that a throwaway society is part of the problem with the world these days. Nobody appreciates how nice it is to just fix something instead of throwing it away and going and buying a new one. Plus, I don't know where everybody's getting all the money to just go buy new stuff all the time. I mean, I like to think I do okay for myself, and I'm still not the, gonna go out and just blow money, even if it is only a four or five dollar part. Why am I gonna give four or five dollars if all I have to do is clean this one? I don't, I don't get that line of thinking. But there's people out there smarter than me, so I'll just keep here doing my thing and you guys can do whatever you want to do. I just like to fix stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's looking good there now. Looking real nice. A little bit of schmoo in the bowl. It actually looks like it's gonna take a screwdriver to chisel it out of here. My goodness. Pretty good amount of rust actually, probably. Had a good bit of water sitting down in the bottom of the bowl here. This is kind of rare to see this much rust. I mean, corrosion, oxidation from aluminum, yeah, I see a lot of that. But this is a lot of honest to God, it's scaly rust. And the worst one of those I've ever seen is a carburetor off of my 1941 Formal A. And there's actually a video of it you can go to. It, it's a poor quality video, I'll warn you now. Back before I was really taking YouTube seriously in my younger days, I uh, acquired a 41 Formal A and did a short little video of getting it going. But the Marvel carburetors on those were all cast iron. And uh, there was a pile of rust like literally a, like a handful of rust when I was done cleaning that carburetor out. It was pretty bad. I got an idea. Uh -huh. That's how you clean it out. Clean now. Good way to uh, check your needle and seat, make sure they're sealing properly. And uh, I used to do this a different way. I used to hang it upside down like this and lift the float up. And somebody in the comments told me that's not the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is to let gravity do the work. Hold it upside down here so the weight of the float is holding down on the seat and then put your mouth on this and blow in it and if you can get air past that then that means your needle and seat's leaking and this one appears to be good so I'm happy about that confidence is high in this one now stick our bowl back on half two that should get us close at least let's get this thing stabbed back on there well, I just got back from uh, picking up the bolts for the muffler. 
Now, I spend a lot of money up there at the local True Value, which ha also happens to be a wheel horse dealership. And that's actually where this mower was purchased brand new. Now, I get a pretty good discount because I spend so much money up there. Holy baby Jesus, these belts were over $100. So much for a free tractor. Whew. Click. Hook our carburetor back up here. Actually, before I hook it up, we're going to go ahead and replace this inline filter here with the uh, ones I got on hand. I like these filters because you can see in them, you can see the color of the gas. And like this scenario, this tank's pretty faded. Can't really see in there. So you can see what your gas looks like. Plus, you can see if there's any crud getting into the filter. All right, I think we're actually ready to go ahead and throw some gas in it and uh, see what happens. This battery is going to be shot. I'm going to go ahead and guarantee that. Uh, so I'll just hook a boost pack to it. guess before we start it we should go ahead and check the oil too make sure it's still got some everything's pretty oily up here so it might be leaking a bit and uh it's down a little bit but it is still there so uh good enough for getting it running once it's running i'll let it run enough to get hot and then we'll go ahead and drain it out put some fresh oil in it well this day is just getting expensive first it was belts now i realized i have to make a run to the fuel stop because this is the last bit of uh, gas I have here. It's actually pre-mixed gas. It's got two-stroke oil in it, but I like to use that on first starts of stuff that's been sitting for a while anyway. All right, we've got our jump pack hooked up. Uh, everything's looking okay. I don't see fuel pouring out of anything. Let's go ahead and give her a lick. See what happens. Bringing back some memories now. Doesn't seem like the headlights work. I can hear the electric PTO kicking in. Go ahead and set that up to choke. <laughs> Holy crap! That thing fired quick. pretty nice. Wow. I don't remember it ever idling that low before. That's all the way down as low as she goes.
thing still runs cherry. Now I remember it always doing that surging at the high idle without a load on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure when you put a load on it, that goes away. And I don't know if this deck belt's gonna hold up to that or not, but we'll go ahead and give it a go. You might see the deck belt shoot off. shut it down because I see oil dripping out of somewhere pretty quick so we better investigate that down here with this oil I not positive but what I think has happened was over the years this thing sitting for so long oil leaking out of the engine has puddled up on top of the PTO pulley and was like I said pulled up there and when I just kicked the belt in it uh, slung oil everywhere. You can see it's strewn about all over the place. Plastered up against this piece of cardboard here. So, I think that's all that was. Is a slow leak that is made a huge splash, so to say. But it sounds like it's running good. Um, like I said, as soon as you kick the belt in, that surge went away, so it smoothed right out and was running really smooth. Might as well zip this battery out of here, too. I'm sure it's no good. I think the date code on the side here said February of 05, so that's a long time gone. Yep, shipped in May of 2005. That's a good battery. Go ahead and drain our oil, too, while we're... Uh fixing other things. That's probably why it's leaking oil. Well, you guys just missed a whole bunch of action because uh, I had the camera on time lapse when I thought I just had it on regular camera. So basically what I discovered under here was that the belt is not actually all that chewed up. Um, it's just maybe a little, well, quite a bit loose when I started. So over here is your tensioner that you engage and disengage with the clutch pedal. Here it is where it pivots. I took that off there. It seemed really stiff, like it wasn't engaging the belt all the way because it was hanging up because it was so stiff. Also the clutch spring, clutch return spring right here. Uh, it was on the third adjustment. I moved it up to the fourth for some more tension. And when I loosened this thing up and greased it, I found that this is actually an eccentric bushing. So I was able to adjust it and shove it further into the belt, which should give us more tension. And yeah, you guys would have got to see all that, but I wasn't paying attention and time lapsed the whole thing. try this thing out I got the gas tank thrown back on the battery sitting over here on the uh, footrest and we're gonna go try and run this thing up a hill or two and see if we can't get the belt to slip if it doesn't slip that means we don't have to pay for that one that's like 60 or 70 dollars that'd be nice it's probably flooded because I had it up on its end contact maybe not
Texas Hill in fifth. Like nothing. <laughs> There's another wheelie. I didn't even try to do that. My foot was slipping off the pedal. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad we don't have to buy that belt now. Boy, it's hard to argue with that. I mean, just listen to that thing idle. All right, guys. I went and got the proper belt for the mower deck this morning. Finished getting that hooked up. Uh, I grabbed a battery as while I was at it. I threw that on there. And uh, I think we are ready to go mow. Better grease everything up real quick before we go mow. pops like it did when I was a kid. Feels good to be back in the saddle, but it really makes me appreciate my zero turn. I think this, uh, this mower's earned itself a spot down at the church to maintain what little grass is left down there. But uh, yeah, beats push mowing. Happy cutting. 